Oh, I think this is the third time, fourth time trying to make this video. Issues with mic and issues with battery. But anyway, a subscriber reached out to me a few weeks ago to tell me his story about house hacking. He went on to tell me uh, that he felt that it would be a very good idea for a video. And after listening to his story, I tend to agree with him. House hacking is something that I think I should create a video on and it is definitely worth talking about. House hacking itself is not something that I've done myself personally. It's not something that I plan to do. That's probably due to my age as I've already bought and sold the house and um, I like my space. So I'm not up for sharing it right now. In terms of what house hacking is and how it can help uh, people get on the property ladder, I definitely think it is worth talking about and worth explaining as it is a good option for many young buyers. So what is house hacking? Well, in the simplest terms, it means buying a property that is slightly bigger than your current requirements. I.e., if you need a one bed apartment, perhaps you buy a two bed apartment and rent out the second room. Or if you need a two bed apartment or house, you buy a three or four bed and rent out the other rooms. Effectively, what you're doing is you're using the rent from one or two of the rooms to help pay down the mortgage. There are pros and cons to house hacking, which I will discuss later in the video. And I will discuss some implications of house hacking that you may want to consider before actually jumping into house hacking. If you are interested in this content and are interested in property investment, make sure you hit that subscribe button and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. So first, let me tell you a little bit of about this subscriber that reached out to me and tell you his story. I've been asked not to give away too much personal details because they don't want people to, to know uh, who they are or what they're doing or what their future plans are. So I'm really gonna focus on the house hacking element of the story. Okay, so let's call this guy Johnny. He lives in Dublin, he's in his mid to late 20s, and he's in a good corporate job, or perhaps it's a good tech job, and he's earning 70K a year. He bought an apartment at the start of the year. It was a two bed apartment in Dublin, near the city center, for 260K. He did need to put in a bit of work to the property, including a new kitchen and bathroom. Johnny only needed one bedroom himself for himself and his girlfriend and he decided to let out the other room. He was lucky enough to find a guy that he gets on with and who he rented the other room to for 520 euro per month, which in my, in my mind is very good value that close to Dublin City. But the money wasn't the only thing that was important to Johnny. He had to make sure that he was letting the room to someone he actually got on with and was able to live with. Also, it should be noted, in a lot of cases, renters are more comfortable to pay a slightly higher rent when they're subletting from a tenant than they are when they're subletting directly from the owner. This is because there's a little bit of a different dynamic when you are leasing directly from the owner who is living in the property. And this is an important fact to remember, as you may not always achieve the full market value for the rent when you are doing house hacking. Johnny's monthly mortgage repayments on the property were actually quite low at 785 per month. And he also had a management fee to pay per month, which was 120 per month. Renting out the spare room wasn't covering Johnny's full mortgage repayments, but it was covering a substantial amount of his mortgage. This allowed Johnny to save money and invest into his future goals. His future goals were actually to buy a second home in a few years time with the money he had saved from the first uh, house hacking experience. Johnny was hoping to buy a larger home next time round, perhaps a three or four bed house and let out the other rooms and he was gonna live in this new house. He was also hoping to hold on to the first prop property and let it out as an investment property. Johnny picked up his first property at what I'm guessing was a reasonable discount, as it was a property that was under rent control at a rent of 100 and, uh, 1,100 per month, which in my mind was probably well below the market rent, which would have scared off a lot of investors. 
However, as Johnny is planning to live in the property or is living in the property, the rental cap doesn't apply to him when he's renting out one of the rooms. From listening to Johnny's story, he really does seem to have hit onto a good investment here. And the house hacking is definitely something that is working for him. He's young enough and he's happy enough to let out the spare room. It was actually help, it did actually help him get on the property ladder and he is now saving for his next property. But Johnny is also very mindful that getting a second property will actually be a little bit harder because he will no longer be a first time buyer and he will be subject to providing at least a 20% deposit on the next property. He was also aware that he would have to refinance the first property as a buy to let mortgage which will likely be on a slightly higher interest rate. And he'll also, he was also very mindful that the loan to value ratio will have to be less than 70%. I kind of feel that give Johnny two or three years, his loan to value ratio will probably be less than 70% pretty easily, considering that he bought the property at a good discount in my mind, and he, the property will no longer be included within the rental cap. Johnny is hoping to leave the corporate world in a number of years and explore other opportunities. And he is hoping that house hacking will help him build a property portfolio, which will support him into later years. Johnny is definitely on the right track. And if he keeps it up, he should be able to build a decent property portfolio. There are definitely pros and cons to house hacking um, by leasing out a spare room. One of the major pros to house hacking in Ireland is rent a room relief, which allows the owner of a house to earn up to 14,000 per year tax free when they let out one of the rooms while they're living in the house. There are some qualifications you need to meet to make sure you get this tax relief. One of them is you have to be a resident within the house so, and it has to be your main, um, your main house that you live in. In terms of who you can actually rent to, you cannot rent a, the room to your child or a civil partner or an employee, and it can't be a short-term letting. I will leave a link to Revenue's website, uh, which explains the rent ro a room relief, um, and I'll leave it in the comments below. But I think it is very important to remember that you, it has to be your main principal private residence for you to avail of this tax relief. The next pro is that the income coming from your tenant will help pay down your mortgage faster, or this money can be used or put towards other investments. It is also important to inform your bank when you are looking for a mortgage approval because they may actually help you get your mortgage approval uh, quicker if you let them know that you are planning to avail of the rent a room relief. The next pro is that it is repeatable on the assumption that when you buy your next house that you also rent out a room within the new house that you've purchased. I will put some caveats on that and I'll come back to that later. So onto the cons. One of the first cons where that comes to mind is that you're gonna to have to share your space with someone. It is your home that you've just bought and perhaps you are not that comfortable sharing this new home with someone and you're only really doing it to earn extra money and pay down your mortgage. And it's not something that you really want to do. Sometimes I think that house hacking applies to different ages, but generally speaking, people of all ages can rent a room, but I think the older you get, the less likely you are willing to share your space with other people. But some people do really enjoy sharing space and great friendships are formed. The next con uh, really is that it's not repeatable at scale. This means that you can only do it with your principal private residence and therefore you can only do it with the home you are currently living in or the house that you're living in at any one, one particular point in time. So it's only one property at a time. Therefore, it's not a great strategy to build a very large portfolio, and it's not a great strategy for a number of different reasons if you are looking to try build a large property portfolio. The first property you buy will be in your own personal name, and if you want to hold it, 
you will need to move it into an investment mortgage. And you will not be able to keep it as a personal mortgage. This will mean that you will have to look at different loan to value ratios. You will also have to look at different interest rates. Neither of these are major stumbling blocks or major barriers, but one thing that you will have to consider uh, and factor in is your capital gains. If you sell your personal property, you do not have to pay any personal or any capital gains. However, if you turn that house into an investment property, you will have to pay capital gains when you sell that property. If you are only looking to build a small property portfolio and hold all the properties within your own personal name and pay income tax on the rent, in some cases you may have to pay income tax of 50% income tax on the rent that you receive if you hold these properties in your personal name. But if that's fine, house hacking is probably a really good way to start and it actually is a great way uh, to get on the property ladder. But I think it is only suitable if you are looking to build a small portfolio. This kind of goes back to the saying or the mantra of start with the end in mind. If your goal is a small portfolio, I think house hacking actually works in your, in your favor, especially at the early stage. However, house hacking, uh, if you're trying to build a large portfolio uh, over a number of years, you could run into a number of stumbling blocks around tax and particularly around capital gains. And if your goal is to build a very large property portfolio, perhaps house hacking is not the best option uh, for you um, and perhaps you need to do it for, as a side business. But you can do both. Perhaps you buy a house in your personal name and do the house hacking stuff and you also invest in property uh, and you grow a large portfolio via a company and you look at that from a long-term point of view. I'm not saying house hacking is a bad thing. I actually think it is a great strategy for some people um, and it's a great strategy for some people to get onto the property ladder. I think the example that I gave within this video is a brilliant example. It ticks all the boxes. Johnny got um, a house below a market value. He is getting a rent uh, from someone he gets along with and is forming a friendship. He's also paying down his mortgage quicker and he, is, he has an ability to save and ultimately uh, get the house he wants, uh, the next house he wants quicker via house hacking. As I said, I don't think house hacking is for me. This is probably mainly down to my age or the stage of life I'm at. I think I'm a bit too old to be sharing accommodation with people who aren't my family. But perhaps I could look into uh, something where I buy a, a property that has a basement apartment and look to rent out the basement apartment. And upstairs would be my principal private residence and the basement apartment would be an investment property. But again, because it is separate, I wouldn't qualify for the rent uh, a room relief scheme and I wouldn't have any major tax benefits. And it's an important thing to actually note. If you are looking at something like this, like perhaps multiple units or a basement apartment, and you think you can rent out one or two of the units and live in one of the units and qualify for the rent uh, room relief, you won't. If the dwelling is separate from any way, from separate locks, separate meters, uh, separate entrances, etc., um, you will not qualify for the um, rent a room relief. In summary, I don't think house hacking is for everyone, but for some people, it definitely is a way for them to maximize their investment, leverage the property that they're in, and actually um, have the ability to grow their savings quite quickly and invest in other, other opportunities as they come along. So therefore, it is a good thing. As always, I hope you did enjoy this content. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, share it, and don't forget to subscribe if you're not subscribing already. And as always, thanks for watching.